Joe Piscopo on the radio. Patrick Wayne is John Wayne's son, but a great actor and a great guy in his own right. Uh, and he joins us live in the studio. Patrick, welcome, man. Happy Friday. Great to have you with us, my friend. Well, thank you, Joe. It's nice to finally meet you. I've heard a lot about you and, of course, seeing your work, too. Very good stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're trying. And and you have, you have, and, and Patrick, by the way, you're listening, is the chairman of the John Wayne Cancer Institute. Mike Connors is in the studio. Uh, this is huge. Mike, welcome, man. How you doing, Mr. Connors? Thank you, Joe. Always good to be here. He's looking oh, huge. Are you kidding me? Oh, you know, Patrick, all great roads lead to uh, Mike Connors, man. He, <laughs> he, he, he knows everybody. He knows everybody. I, I got a call from, uh, I think it was Frankie V, our, our sales guy. He goes, uh, he, uh, Mike Connors bringing in Patrick Wayne. I said, get out of here. Are you kidding me? John Wayne's son, the chairman. Of the of the Wayne Cancer Institute, and and also we want to welcome uh, Dr. Grumley here. Uh, I know you have a doctor, but look, if we could start with you, Patrick. Let me begin. Uh, what was it like to be the son of such a legend? Not just a legend. It was like jo the legend, John Wayne. And I know you've been asked this a thousand times. Forgive me, but it, it, you're you're such a regular, grounded guy. And and give us your your take on being the son of the great John Wayne. Well, I I think you hit it right there because. Well, he was a, a huge and continues to be a huge celebrity. His name yep. still has a, a lot of resonance, which is uh, surprising to me, uh, astounding to me, but uh, really works out well if you're trying to use his name to create awareness about cancer research and try to raise funds for cancer research. But, but in addition to being a, a very popular guy, he was a very grounded you use the term grounded, and, and yeah, that's the yeah. way I would describe him. He was born in a small town in Iowa from very humble beginnings, and he, he never lost sight of that or touch with that and never lost touch with what he considered to be important, the core values of, of uh, you know this great country, being honest, reliable, trustworthy, the importance of friends and uh, relationships. So that that's the best way to describe the experience. Um, you know, he... He dealt with fame in a different way. He um, he appreciated his fan base, but he wasn't part of the glittery Hollywood lifestyle that, um, or so when you know when he was alive. Well, we want to go talk about the John this this great organization that you're doing with cancer. Being a cancer survivor, I so appreciate it. But when John Wayne, he's so bigger than life, man. And you're absolutely right. To this day, people, kids will use references of John Wayne. So he walked. He comes home after. Did he come home like at five o'clock? Did he? Or you know, when we do the film shoots, I mean, was he like that kind of dad, or did he bring you to the set with him? Well, I'm both. But but when my dad worked, he usually worked on location. So. He was away from the home. And my parents were separated when I was about four years old. But I yeah. probably saw my, my, my father as much uh, as, as if he were still, you know, if my parents were still together because he was away so much um, on location doing films. And at an early age, I started going with him. Yeah. And um, I, at the time, had a brother and two sisters who had no interest in being on a set or working in films. So um, it was a very special time for me because I didn't have to compete with him for his attention and uh, got to spend some quality time with him. It was pretty good. It was great. Yeah, plus you, 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 did, what, you made, oh, did, how many films? You did like 40 films? 40, Is that right? Yeah, you pulled oh, that one right oh. out of the air. Oh, look at that. And 11 with your father. How cool is that? Patrick Wayne, a great actor in his own right. And now he is the chairman of the John Wayne Cancer Institute. And uh, Michael Connors, if I can ask, how did you get involved? How, you get involved with all the great things, man. And God, but how did you and Patrick get together? Well, it was a, a while back. They were having an auction, Heritage uh, auction. They were having an auction. They were selling off some of uh, John Wayne's memorabilia. I happened to go there. Patrick was there. We met there, and then he came on the radio show a couple of times. And it, it wasn't before that. What do you mean? Wasn't before that? We, we didn't meet before the auction. <laughs> no, we didn't meet oh, before I the auction. We went back farther than that. <laughs> okay, maybe we did. I forgot. Then. Boy, he's in bad shape, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, listen. This, let me tell you about Mike Connors, Patrick. I will talk about. I want to talk about the the organization. And doctor, we want to talk to you as well. Uh, he, he takes me to church. I go to visit him, and I, and I say, I need, look, I help need help with my estate because I'm a mess. Takes care of everything in 30 seconds. Now we're going to church. I go, Mike, where are we going? We're going to Brooklyn. We're going to, uh, you know, Our Lady of Assumption. What was the name? Our Lady, Our Lady of, of Angels. What? Of Angels. I knew it was an A Our in there Lady somewhere, the Michael. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
That's it's, the next parish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we go. I have the best man. He's got Father Paul Balecki. I'm going to oh, see I you Tuesday. It's uh, Isn't he great, Father oh, Paul? And I'll, Mike, I'll be with you Tuesday, by the way, at St. Pat's. Is that what we're doing? On, we, Patrick, yeah, St. Patrick's Cathedral. Us, Oh, oh, this is great. Hey, uh, Patrick, so so uh, you now, is it true that your dad coined the term the big C in regards to cancer? Well, he did say it. I don't know if he was the per- first person to say it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He, 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 the first time he had cancer was 1964, and uh, he had, had lung cancer. And he, he was trying to just make it a private affair and uh, uh, because— uh. You know, he didn't want to affect his career. You know, you get cancer, and then maybe they don't hire you tomorrow. So, he, you know, he used that approach. Some, um, some, some newspaper person found out about it, so he went public with it. And I, I think he was forever. Um, yeah, I think it was an ill wind that blew good for something because because he did more for cancer and cancer awareness when he went public with it, and and he, he knew how to talk about it. when he decided to talk about stuff. He was great. Yeah, and tell us about the organization and, and how you help people and where they can go if indeed, you know, because there's that fog, man. And, uh, and again, I just had, I just had, but I had thyroid cancer, medullary carcinoma, very very aggressive within the thyroid. Oh, big boy. Al, Big Al right here, but Big Al went through a, a heck of a, a, a cancer situation, beat it, I beat it, but you're always looking over your shoulders, man. If people are nervous like we are every single day, where, right. can we, where can we find you and what, what can the, the center do for us if we may ask us? cancer survivors let, let me give you some sites to go to just to start and then i want to introduce you to our uh, breast cancer director Janie grumley Janie right. grumley yeah so right. you've got john wayne.org uh, jwci which is the john wayne cancer <laughs> institute.org or jwcf.org these sites are great it, you know it's a way to find out uh, what what I think is great is a person gets is diagnosed with cancer and they're devastated and they're overwhelmed and they have no idea what to do. This is a great starting place for them. It's a user friendly website where they get answers to questions, important answers to questions, um, and also how they can help us do our job. And right now, I'd like you to say hello to Dr. Janie Grumley. She's the breast or, breast cancer director at the John Wayne Cancer Institute. Dr. Janie, welcome Hi. to the show. Thanks Hi. for coming in. Oh, oh so get, happy to be here. So, are you, are you working now? Where where is the where are you located, and what do you do in regards to the John Wayne Cancer Institute? Yeah, so I'm the director of the breast um, oncology group for the John Wayne Cancer Institute, and then right across the street. There's the Margie Peterson Breast Center where we do a lot of our clinical work, and I'm the director of that program as well. So I basically take over two kind of different areas when it comes to medicine. There's the clinical work where we get to take care of patients and develop kind of an all-encompassing program for our patients. And then right across the street is where we can actually do cutting-edge research. The John Wayne Cancer family has just been instrumental in allowing some of this cutting edge research that we really truly need when it comes to cancer care because there's just so much that's going on and we want to be able to help patients of tomorrow not just do the same thing every single day but we want to make it better for those that are there tomorrow. Could you flesh out that (laughs) all-encompassing term that you use because I, I, yeah. I, I just think it's a fantastic program that you have going. So on the clinical side, the, the yeah. scariest thing for somebody who gets diagnosed with cancer is where do I go? What do I do? Yep. Yep. Right? There's so many different doctors out there. How do you decide? Breast cancer is definitely one of these areas where it is extremely confusing. There are so many people that you can go to. There's a medical oncologist. There's a radiation oncologist. There's a surgeon. There's, you know, plastics. What do we have to There's genetics. And what we've done is actually brought it all together. So a patient just really just has to call our number, and we take care of it all. So you the patients the, come on one day, and we see all all the doctors are there. They bring them into the clinic. And actually, the patient stays in one clinic room, and all the doctors go through. God, that's great. God yeah. bless you for that. What's what's the number, Dr. Grumley, if we may ask? Oh, for our clinic, it's 310-582-7100, and that's the Margie Peterson Breast Center. We have the state-of-the-art imaging right there and then. So if yeah. anything needs yeah. to be done, that can also be done. And we've actually take it, taken it a step further back in that women feel lumps all the time, and they think it's cancer. Yes. So not all of these lumps and bumps and symptoms are actually cancer. And we've actually said, you know, we really need an urgent care for these women because 
most of the time what happens is you feel something, you have to make an appointment to see your doctor two weeks down the road, then you have to make an appointment for imaging two weeks down the road, and then by that time you've been scared for four weeks and you have no idea what it is, and it's probably nothing. So we have a breast health clinic there where people can just pick up the phone, same phone number, and be seen within a 24-hour period. We can do their imaging, do their workup right then and there, and we can resolve it. 85% of the time it's nothing. God, yeah, God bless you. Give us the number one more time because I know a lot of gals listen to this show, doctor. If you'd be yeah. so kind to give us that number again. 310? 310-582-7100. And we just really want our patients to feel like they're family. We're yeah. going to take care yeah. of you. It's kind of yeah. along the, the lines of John Wayne and how he lived his life. And we are here to help, and we're going to take care of it all for you. And it just takes the scariness out of such a horrible time in people's lives. Yeah. Oh, Dr. Janie, that is so appreciated. Thank you so much, Dr. Janie Grumley right there. And, and Mike Connors, Thanks. I'll see you on Tuesday. Mike, thank you for bringing the best of the airwaves, as you always do, even on Ho Ask the Lawyer on your show and all the great people you know, Mike. You know we love you, man. Appreciate it very, love you very too, much. Joe. Happy Columbus hey, Day. Ha thank you. Thank you. And Patrick Wayne, it man. I, you know what? You, Hey, buddy, man, hosting Tic Tac Doe. I mean, oh come on. God, that, yeah. Come on. Yes, man. You're the man. And when we you're have more man. time, I'll tell you some funny stories from that. You got to come You got to come back with Michael. And, Janie, you're always welcome as well. Because I, I wanted to ask Thank you so you. much more. But we got to move on, and we're going to make way for Mr. Mike Gallagher. But we appreciate it. Thank you. Patrick Wayne, He's a, yes, he's the son of actor John Wayne, but a great actor in his own right and the chairman of the John Wayne Cancer Institute. And to Mike Connors and Janie Grumley, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for all the, you know, making headway for because people are really, really upset, really scared at this time in their life. God bless you all for helping people in this regard. God bless you and have a great weekend, you guys. And yes, Mike, happy Columbus Day.